Okay, we're gonna restart the startup spotlight pitching, but also I wanted to let you know about the two other tracks that are happening today. The one in the Roma room is the product track, and there's gonna be very interesting discussions there. And the other one in Vienna room is angel investment track, for those interested in uh, angel investments, obviously. So I'm gonna uh, pass on the microphone to George again, and good luck to all the startups. Thank you, thank you. So I'm back again. Uh, so uh, like Anka said, we're gonna start with the, the startups, but uh, because this is how things go, we actually have a surprise announcement from Simon from Oxygen and Walter from Fiddler Capital that I wanna invite for two minutes on stage to tell you some great news that they have. So take it away, guys. Thanks, thanks, George. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> Right, uh, we won't keep you very long at all, but we would, um, sorry, so I'm Simon from Oxygen. And I'm Walter from Fiedler Capital. So just a very exclusive announcement, and we wanted to make this announcement here at HowToWeb because it's an awesome conference, but more importantly, it's in the region. Uh, we, uh, Oxygen Accelerator, have uh, partnered with Fiedler Capital, and the whole of our next program, uh, which starts in March 2015, and we're open for applications now, will be for CEE and Baltics startups only. Fiedler Capital are funding this. We're gonna be bringing startups to the UK from the region, investing 21,000 euros for 8%, running through our accelerator program, our normal accelerator program, making them a huge success, and then Fiedler Capital potentially could invest a further round into them. This is unique, uh, and we think it's something quite special. Yeah, so Fiedler Capital is a brand new uh, VC firm. Uh, we're based in uh, Vienna and Budapest, and we're doing investments of up to 250,000 euros. Um, and we feel that by partnering up with Oxygen Accelerator, we're giving the startups from this region an, an alternative on how to uh, you know, expand to international markets. Um, besides just trying to go directly to the US at a pre-seed and seed stage, we feel the startups need a little bit more help. So we feel that, this, like I said, a great alternative for the startups. Great. Thanks, guys. Applications are open. Go to oxygenaccelerator.com, and we look forward to meeting you all. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, and one more thing. We actually have a nice corner right there in Londra where you can video pitch. So everyone at uh, How to Web Live TV can video pitch right now, uh, grace to our partners from Telecom. So if you have anything you want to say and you want people to, to hear about you, just go to the corner, you can sign up, and anyone in the room can video pitch whatever you like. Right? Perfect. So now, without further ado, I'm going to invite on stage our second round of jury and evaluators. So I'm going to invite Carmen, which is the ex-CEO of Avangate. Carmen, please join us. Have a seat. Uh, woo! <laughs> uh, Adrian Giara, which is a very active uh, angel investor in Romania. Adi, woohoo! <laughs> uh, Daniel Lynch, a manager partner for 3TS Capital and Lubin, co-founder of Launch Hub. Please come on stage, Lubin. Uh, and now we have our first team ready. Are you ready? <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have uh, on stage Livebox. That's all? Uh, come on. So, my name is Radu. I'm co-founder and CEO of Livebox. The whole journey began a few months ago when my girlfriend told me I sleep on the couch if I, go, if I don't give her the holiday photos. And you know what? She's not the only one having problem getting photos from her friends. From all the girls and women we asked, more than 70% keep endlessly asking for photos from their friends, from the last event, party, or wedding. This is wrong. We, are, we have smartphones, and we need a smart way to get the photos from our friends. We believe we can help with this. This one over there is my, is my phone. It's the new iPhone 7 with a huge screen. Before coming here, I took some photos with the regular camera app, but you can take it with any app you'd like. My co-founders, Dragos and Ovidiu, also took some photos in the same place. Something remarkable happens next. Livebox knows we took photos together so when I leave the place, it reminds me to share with them the photos I just took. But the real magic happens now. Livebox selects only the photos I took there and automatically 
adds Dragos and Ovidio to the album. Just like that. The other phone, the black one, is Dragos's phone. Coming back to mine, when I tap share, the photos are compressed and securely uploaded into the cloud, and both Dragos and Ovidio receive a notification that I shared photos with them. Dragos opens Livebox, and just like that, my photos are on his phone. He shares his photos too, and boom, I receive the photos of me instantly. All into one single private album. It is just as easy when you have a large group of friends. There is no overhead. Let's take a look at it. This is nice. This is nice. But this one, I really like it, so I save it to my phone. See how easy it is? All these photos are private. Only the three of us can see them and nobody else. That's because they are encrypted. So the celebrity photo leak that happened two months ago will never happen with Livebox. We made sharing photos with your friends easier than sending an SMS. You take the photos, Livebox reminds, tap share, and that's it. We do the heavy lifting so you can truly enjoy the moment, your moment. We started working on Livebox in February. In June, we had an MVP, and uh, in uh, August, we were selected as the official photo sharing app during the Summer Music Festival. Earlier uh, this month, we started a UK accelerator. Um, and we are now in Newcastle taking Livebox to a, new, to a new step. The market might seem crowded, but have you ever seen a, an app that's smart enough to automatically select only the photos you took when you were with your friends, to automatically suggest the friends you took photos with? And just to know who you took photos with? I know I haven't. We we'll start by, by targeting tightly knit groups of people, such as student uh, organization members and high school students. It is not scalable, but will onboard very relevant users that will spread the word for us. Also, because we send sharing reminders at the right time, we keep people coming back to our app. Livebox is free to download, and users pay $1.99 a month for premium features. And because we know a lot about where our users like to spend their time, we can offer high-quality, location-based advertising. We're talking about a 31.5 billion US dollar market doubling in size each year. But you know what's even more interesting? Business to business, real-time, unaltered visual news. Imagine um, a user taking a photo in Ukraine, for example, right in the war zone. Um, a journalist buys that photo, user gets paid, we, we take a commission. This is really, really big. Why us, you might ask? As a team, we've been working together for more than 12 years. We're best friends, have complementary skills, and some awards under our belt. Not only work very good together, but Livebox is our second mobile application you are passionate about photography. So we have this problem we, we are solving. And Dragos is one of Romania's top Instagram photographers. To, to sum it up, Livebox has a viral use case. We're a strong and balanced team, and the market is big and growing fast. We're looking for partners to help us grow the user base and at the right time invest in Livebox to, uh, for user acquisition and to help us develop Android and Windows phone apps. Until then, um, now grab your iPhone, download Livebox, and start sharing photos with your friends. It's free and available in the App Store. My name is Radu. I'm co-founder and CEO of Livebox. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect timing. <laughs> Any questions or feedback from the jury, please? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm confused. So you, you want me to pay for a subscription, but you also give me advertisements? I, I don't see the two of them mixed together. Is it one or the other? Uh, if you pay, you, do, you won't have advertising. Okay, so paid accounts, no advertising? No advertising and uh, premium features, like full resolution, uncompressed photos over Wi-Fi. Okay, and uh, how do you plan to build an audience? I mean, the application is cool, it looks very promising, but the Biggest problem is how you manage to get the audience. At the beginning, will be no scalable things. It's private. That means that we will go to where people take photos and they share them, like tightly knit groups of people. Once we, are, we onboard them, from there, uh, we saw that once they 
get to that uh, wow moment where it automatically matches photos, they invite friends and invite and invite. Okay, for, first of all, a very tight presentation. Thank you for that. Thank you. The, uh, going back to the, your, your subscriber acquisition, how, how, how you're expecting viral acquisition, you're expecting word of mouth to build yes. your customer base. This is, this is based upon getting a critical mass of everybody sharing the, using the same software just as WhatsApp or other things like that. Yes. How do you break the barrier of, of, of initial market penetration? I, I, we believe that uh, no matter what our efforts will be, if the product is not good and it's not helping people, it will not grow. So we'll go to the product and make it viral. It is viral because you don't share photos with you. Uh, but make it so they talk about it. I'm, uh, I'm a Slack evangelist because I like it. People just keep, say, keep telling about what they love. Do you have any paying customers at this point? At this point, no. So it's free. How it's long free. We, we haven't uh, implemented the, the paying uh, scheme. And uh, how long have you been on the market? Uh, we had the MVP in June. And the, uh, the actual launch happened uh, just before, in September, in early September. This September? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Give it up for Radu. Thank you very much. OK, so now, please, Trevor Starter, come on stage. Take it away. Woohoo! Joe from New York wants to visit Paris, but he's really tired of staying big in big hotels, eating in chain restaurants, and doing generic sightseeing things. On the other side of the ocean, in Paris, we have Francois, who wants to renovate his old grandfather's guest house. Of course, he needs money. How does he get it? He posts his project on Travelstarter. Excuse me. He posts his project on Travelstarter, a crowdfunding platform for tourism. In return for donations, he, ask, he gives users attractive travel rewards, such as a stay in his spare room, a home-cooked meal, or a tour of the city. Joe finds the project and sees that this is exactly what he's been looking for, so he funds it and gets the amazing experience in return by meeting a local entrepreneur in Paris. My name is Blas, and this is Travel Starter a crowdfunding platform that connects travelers with local tourism. So what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? We have a lot of entrepreneurs and local businesses and also individuals that want to work in tourism, but they cannot get enough funding to start their projects. How are we solving this? We have a platform, a crowdfunding platform for projects in tourism that allow businesses to get donations by offering attractive travel rewards to their potential customers and travelers from around the world. Our business model is quite simple. We have the typical crowdfunding fees, so we take a percentage off all the donations. Uh, usually that's 5 to 10 percent, depending on the type of funding. And we're also considering later on adding continuous travel rewards, meaning that after the project's already completed, people are still going to be able to book the rewards and get the experience that they want in the select destination. The technology, we have some general crowdfunding technology in the background, but we have added some extra new approaches, uh, such as map-based search, because map and location is really important when it comes to traveling. And we also have a reward-based project search, meaning that, for example, I want to go to um, Bucharest and I want to get a stay here, so I just select Bucharest, I select that I want accommodation, and I get all the projects in Bucharest that are offering accommodation as a reward. Our marketing approach so far has been quite simple. We haven't done any extensive marketing campaigns. So we've done some social media targeting. We have an ambassador program in place. We are talking to several tourism boards uh, in the region, and uh, we're hoping to partner with some other travel industry specialists. We are, of course, counting on the extra marketing support provided by the projects that are going to be posted on our platform. The team, uh, there's two of us. The core team is, consists of the two of us, myself and my colleague Anushka. We both have extensive experience in the travel industry. 
And we have a team of developers and designers and a couple of people from around the world since this is a global project and it's about travel, so we do want to connect with as many people as possible also within our team. Our current status, uh, we have our pre-launch landing site up and running and uh, the closed beta site is already running. Uh, we're hoping to launch it into a, an open beta uh, late this month or hopefully uh, by the end of the year. Our current metrics we have received during the pre-launch phase without any extensive marketing. We had around uh, 1,300 email signups. Uh, we have over, we received over 100 really great pitches and we're currently working with 20 pilot projects that are gonna be included in the open beta version. And those are really good projects that we've been working with directly for the past couple of months. Our biggest challenges at this point are getting more quality projects and of course getting users traction, which is the key word in the startup world, of course. So this is tra Travel Starter. It's a crowdfunding platform that connects travelers with local tourism. And my name is Blash. I'm the COO and um, co-founder of the company. So stay tuned. Travel Starter is coming to a city near you hopefully soon. And I hope your next travel experience is going to be done through Travel Starter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where, where are these uh, signups coming from? The signups, we've been, we've been doing a lot of marketing on social media. Some of it was viral, a little bit also targeted and paid. So we're directing people to our pre-launch website and they just sign in with their emails and we're having them, like we have a database of the users that are interested in uh, becoming paying users, hopefully once we launch with the real projects. And they're also the ones that are being targeted to also post their own projects because we've been mostly working on the project side and now we're slowly moving to getting the donators. Other than this, the, the donations, what is your differentiators from Airbnb? Um, well, we are, we want to say that we are a crowdfunding platform. So that's, we want to connect people with, um, with, who have great ideas, who are local entrepreneurs. Because Airbnb, anybody can rent out a room and say like, come stay with me. But here you're actually helping someone's idea and you're connecting with someone who's active in the local tourism sphere. So it's much more than just staying with someone who has a spare room. It's about actually and supporting local tourism. So we're also counting on the local community support, not just travelers, which you know a lot of those people can harness, I believe. It sounds like you're very reputation dependent then. I mean, a couple of bad experiences that get reviewed on your site could actually turn a lot of people off. True. Uh, we have a couple of verification systems in place. So we talk to all the pro private pilot projects uh, one, of the, one of our pilot projects that's probably the best is a hostel in Wales that's almost done. The guy has already run a campaign on Indiegogo and was quite successful. So he wants to do a second phase through us and he's got an existing base of uh, followers, um, customers, and he's got a reputation already out there through his social media. How big, how big the market do you think it is? Because from what I'm seeing, you have two parts of it. One are the travelers and the one on the project themselves. Somebody, somebody should create the project. So, okay, travelers are a lot um, and probably you address the younger uh, people here. However, the projects, you have to find them, promote them. So have you looked on the size of the market? Yeah, so we're based in Slovenia. And two of our major pilot countries are Slovenia and Croatia, where tourism is pretty big. So um, we estimate that there's been around 10, in Slovenia alone, there's been 10 million accommodation nights in the whole year, which is a lot for a tiny country. And around 40% of those are private accommodation. And in Croatia, numbers are even bigger. So there's a lot of people we can target. Thank we, you. Thank sorry. you very much. Yeah. Okay. Give it up. Thank you. So now we have uh, Joe Step. Please, come on stage. Hello everyone, my name is Tiana, I'm from Montenegro at, and it's really nice to be here and see you all. Today I'm here to present Geostep, that is service that will bring a thrill of treasure hunt on mobile phones, make people go out and experience adventure. Geostep connects real life clues with geolocation technologies. On our website, geostep.me, anyone can create treasure hunt 
with clues, locations and riddles in a few easy steps. In our mobile application, players can enter unique game code and the quest can start. Application is designed to guide them from one clue to another by using geolocation technologies. So on this screen, you can see a progress, how a player is coming and finishing some quests and giving another ones. On each location, a player has to find hidden QR code by, by resolving given riddle. From our perspective, uh, GeoStep can be used in uh, different fields. For example, first one is entertainment, where anyone can, fan, can uh, have fun with their friends uh, uh, to express their competitive spirit in competition with friends or completely strangers. And also, people can create a game, not only to play it, also to create it. Uh, second field is tourism. GeoStep will enable businesses to create interactive treasure hunt quests, to experience some new places, landmarks, or hidden beauties in the new way through gamification. These quests can be uh, offered to tourists, mostly individuals with adventurous spirit, uh, for a symbolic amount of money. In Montenegro, touristic organization is uh, interested and plans to implement GeoStep game for upcoming winter season to make people discover our most famous ski centers. Also, we see uh, GeoStep usage in education. Uh, also, that means in game-based learning. So that can be like a free promotion tool for our application and we can get a lot of users on that way. In this field, we have already have agreements with the faculties and school in Montenegro and also Slovenia. Uh, third field is marketing. Uh, last clue uh, can be located in restaurant, cafe, museum, uh, amusement park, or something like that. And that can be, can be a reward to players that successfully finish their quest. For getting, for example, free entrance, some discounts, free drink, or something like that. Uh, last field we see as uh, maybe the most potential one, uh, potential one with uh, making money is customer loyalty program. Uh, this is based on uh, business owners who will create specific tasks that their customers need to finish. For example, visiting or restaurants in chain, ordering specific meal, or just having a bill high enough. So uh, we came here today to present our product, to try to expand to international market and also to uh, to know how, what do you think about this and what do you think is the best way to, uh, to focus on? Which of this field is best to focus on? We are a team of five people, programmers, web developers and designers. We met six years ago at the university and since then worked with considerable success on several projects. Besides the core of our team, we have advisors and mentors from startup, business and marketing. So thank you for listening, and I hope that you have some questions for me. Yeah, uh, do, do you want to sell this as um, an app, or do you want to white label it and sell it to the hotels or restaurants? Or what? What's the idea? No. How, how do you is, want to? This is sell platform. It? So the, uh, for uh, usual users, for clients, it can be free, but for businesses it will be paid. So white platform for businesses with to B2B uh, market, but for just clients, so B2C, it's free. So I'm not going to ask questions. I just um, would uh, like to say that it's, in my opinion, way too complicated to focus on one use case, one type of target customers or users would be much better, so you can penetrate and see where yes. it resonates most. That's exactly why we presented all fields. We would like to hear opinion about which one is the best one to focus on, because we can't focus on everything. You said that you already discussed with a lot of uh, people, but have you had any installation at this point and it's working? 
Uh, for now, we have only tested it with our friends since the uh, product is finished, it's in open beta, but we will uh, make uh, usage of it in education in May. So we implementing that uh, now. It will be uh, organized like uh, in learning in uh, schools in Slovenia and Montenegro. And also in winter season, it will be uh, so much users, I hope, because uh, tourists in Montenegro are coming uh, in winter season. So I hope that it will be a lot of them. I think as a customer, I think I'd be sold for this. I think it'd be a lot of fun to, be, to play the game this way. Um, if you were to raise capital, what would you use the money for? What if you? If you were to raise capital, okay. how would you use the money? Okay, first way to use money is to implement things that are not finished yet and also to uh, make marketing of product. Because if you have a game, people need to find out that it exists so they can use it. If they don't know that it exists, it not make sense. So marketing is the first thing to do. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, and now I'm going to invite on stage uh, the fourth team from our 16 semi-finalists. So please, Vintage, come on stage. Okay. Before we have invented the internet, even before the penicillin, before the light bulb, before the printing press, even before agriculture, 15,000 years before the invention of the wheel, we designed one of the most creative products in the history of mankind, and we coined it art. In product design, there is a fundamental rule that a perfect product should be nothing else than an extension of our body. If we look at art, we can see that it's an extension of who we are. Look at this mural painting in Argentina. It's hands of the people who are living there. They try to express them and to say who they are, and they try to say that they were there. The thing is that if we take all these hands away, it will be nothing more than a simple wall, like millions of other walls, which is oppressing, dull, and it will never inspire you or motivate you to fight for peace, for instance, to be free, to remember your origins, to love like a madman, to show off sometimes, to go over long distance, and to be unique. This specific photo made by Char Char Charles Urier is unique just because technology made it unique. Just because this specific photo made without any Photoshop, it's on billions of computers. And that's what technology does today. It makes things accessible. And right now, I'm going to present you how vintage is reinventing the art. So we designed an online gallery where all the national artists can be there. An art marketplace where actually you can afford every piece of art which is there, an art assistant tool which will help artists promote their name and actually be nearer to the customers. And all of this is vintage. So we provided online gallery where you have hundreds of artworks of hundreds of national artists and actually you have the, uh, the possibility to see their stories, to see the stories of artworks and of course to see what to get the art you want as quickly as possible. We have a monetization scheme based on two principles, on selling and renting. So basically, why I said that why everything is accessible? Just because one piece of art can be rented for five euros per month. So you can have an art gallery in your place just for 150 euros per month. And that's fine. And then we have the artist uh, assistant tool which helps him to build his portfolio, to make his account, so actually he can communicate with you to see who are the viewers of artworks, who went to renting, what artworks are right now uh, very popular on the market, and so on. And we build our product in Moldova just because we thought that if we build it in Moldova and it goes well in Moldova, it will go well everywhere. 
just because Moldova, I think, is one of the poorest countries in Europe, and we said, okay, let's give it a try. And we have this kind of private users, where they have their own art galleries at their places, and they actually rent artworks, and we have more than one, one, 150 guys like that. We have Philip Morris, for instance, a company which rented 32 artworks from us. And there are other 16 companies who rented it. And just because you would like an art gallery at your place, we do it in two days. Easy. And we have, for instance, restaurants where actually the clients choose the artworks this re specific restaurant will have in the future. And, for instance, this is an example of one of our artists. We rented 17 artworks to three offices, two sold pieces till date. And she, she earned with us 2,000 euros. Otherwise, she wouldn't have nothing, except her own PR skills, except doing the same exhibitions, private galleries, all that, that middle-aged stuff. So if you think that art cannot be accessible, I'll show you Salman Khan, who made education accessible. If you think that art is not accessible, then I'll say that Brian Chesky made traveling accessible. If you think that art cannot be part of your lives, I, I want to show you Mark Zuckerberg, who made communication part of your life. Steve Jobs, who brought the Apple PCs everywhere in the world. And of course, just because we are today at the How to Web, I really want to pay a tribute to this guy who invented the internet, and without it, my startup wouldn't be here and it wouldn't be at all. Our beta is on, and our official release date will be on 1st January 2015. Uh, thank you thank very you. much. Any questions? Uh, for the good presentation, you need a kid or a, uh, a small cat. I didn't see any of it here. My, my advice would be, um, have you thought about the insurance when you rent? And uh, second, how is this done today? Uh, if I'm an artist and I want to, to promote my, my, my um, um, art, uh, how, how am I doing this? So right now he uploads his photos on our platform. He inserts his uh, artwork in specific category of prices. Just because, to be clear, on our platform we have only four prices for thousands of artworks, just to make it simple for everybody. And he chooses the artwork in the price category, and if there is a customer, he makes an order, and actually that, pri that price which the customer pays includes transportation, installation and insurance of artwork. So basically, if you rent it from us and something happens to the artwork, don't worry, everything is fine. I'd like to give you some feedback on the presentation. Look, this looked like a motivational speaking. I really did not understand the business side of what you want to do. You spent two minutes talking about paintings and you just uh, lost time instead of explaining what's the business side of it. How do you plan to make money? What's the... Okay, so... I really don't have any educated questions to put you, sorry. Uh, in this case, I'll just pre-debate your, uh, your saying by saying that I don't really care about money at this spe specific time. I'm not here actually to seek for angel investment. I'm not here actually to, to get that prize of uh, something. I'm here to give you something, actually to present something worthwhile, which was forgotten. And I'm sorry because maybe I didn't use the problem Thing, the business model thing, the team thing, the investment thing, uh, the actual forecasts. I had that presentation a long time ago, but I changed it just because I'm who I am and I have an art startup. I'm not a, I don't have a multimillionaire hoping for doom company. Okay? Thank you. Artists. There you go.